Hey guys, my name is Miles, and uh, I thought I'd do a series of videos here about how to record a radio commercial. Uh, I spent about 11 years in the broadcast industry, so uh, needless to say, I've done a lot of uh, a lot of commercial work uh, in my career. And I'm sure there's a lot of you know tutorials and stuff on on YouTube. You know how to use whatever recording software, microphone, you know, reviews and tutorials and how to do those, but you know, as far as, uh, as far as kind of doing a start to finish an A to Z, you know, what you need to, to get going with recording professional sounding audio all the way to the final product. Um, that's kind of what I wanted to do here is kind of show you where to start with equipment, how you can get going with that, and then where you can basically finish that off with. Um, you know, a lot of people that enter the broadcast arena um, that, come, that have come to work for us, uh, you know, they've they've not, it's almost like they've not really been fully trained or fully understand the equipment that they're using or, or, you know, some of the applications with the recording software. So I found that to be the case throughout, throughout my career. And I thought, you know, maybe I should do something like this. But th that being said, that's kind of the primary purpose for this. But there's a lot of other applications for this. I mean, it doesn't have to be just radio. I mean, uh, you think about streaming audio platforms like uh, Pandora and Spotify, you know, this would be a good, uh, a good series for somebody that wants to do some commercials for that. Or, you know, even like uh, getting started with podcasting, I can see that being relevant to this video and video voiceovers and video content creation. If you're going to be doing some voiceovers for your video, hey, this is also going to be good for that too. Because when it all comes down to it, it's basically, you know, good recording uh, practices are good recording practices, period. So that's what I'm going to kind of walk you through. So to kind of start off here, the, the first video in this series that I'm going to be doing today I'm really going to be talking about equipment primarily, and I'm going to show you a few screenshots of some things that I think are interesting. But uh, you basically have two things that you want to be conscious of here. Number one is your recording software, whatever you use. Um, there's a lot of different things out there. I use Adobe Audition, which has been a, a pretty standard, a pretty standard thing in the broadcast industry. You'll see a lot of people using Adobe Audition to record with. So that's what I'm going to be using for these uh, for these walkthroughs here. Uh, the other thing that you want to really be thinking about is your microphone. You know, that, that's, um, that's probably the most important part of the, of the chain, I would say. Uh, we always talk about, you know, in recording in general, it's garbage in, garbage out. Mean, meaning, you know, the recording, the end result is only going to be as good as the weakest link within the chain. So if you're recording on, a, on an old tape recorder <laughs> or something like that, obviously that audio is going to be pretty bad. There's not a lot you can do to, to improve that. Um, so that's kind of where I'm going to start today. I want to talk to you a little bit about microphones here. Um, this is the microphone that I use um, here at my home studio. This is the MXL 990. And it's basically, you know, uh, any microphone that you want to use for recording voiceovers, you're basically going to want to look for a large diaphragm microphone. Okay. And a lot of them are going to be condenser microphones, meaning they run off of phantom power, 48 volt phantom power as opposed to not having that power. Um, so that's what you're really gonna find primarily, and that's what I would drive you towards. There's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of USB microphones on the market nowadays, which they all do a pretty good job, uh, but if you wanna kinda go uh, the level above that, I think you wanna kinda look at you know, large, a large diaphragm uh, condenser microphone like that. Um, so the MXL 990, I'm gonna actually, I don't know, so I'm gonna do a, a quick Google search here. MXL 990, see how much that's going for. It's a pretty inexpensive microphone. I'm seeing it here for, as low as, you know, $80, $90, something like that. And I, like I said, this is something that I've, that I picked up, you know, eight years ago or something. Um, another couple of uh, microphones, if you want to spend a little bit more money, um, that you can kind of look at would be, you can kind of look at uh, this, uh, I think it's Heel is the name of the company, H-E-I-L, but it's the PR40. Uh, that's one that we use pretty standardly around our company now. Um, that's a good large diaphragm microphone. Uh, that one's going to run you, I believe, somewhere in the $300 to $300 to $400 range. Um, before that, uh, we used um, Electro Voice microphones, RE20s and RE27s. Those are very, very good microphones, but uh, they get pricey as well, $400 to $500. So if you're wanting to kind of keep this on a budget, I think you can get all this done. My daughter's yelling up there. I think you can get a, a pretty good home recording setup for uh, probably a couple hundred dollars, something like that. I really don't think you need to, to be spending that much because as far as this MXL 990 goes, it's a pretty good, pretty good microphone for recording voice. Um, if I had to kind of compare this to the, to the PR40 and the RE20, 
I would say that those are up there, like on a scale of one to 10, you know, one being this horrible tape recording, you know, recorded thing and 10 being the best microphone ever for voiceovers that are being used today. I would put the MXL 990, I put it, you know, somewhere in that seven range. And I think that your, 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 uh, your PR40 and your RE20 that I was just talking about, I'd say that those are, you know, more like an eight or so. So really, you know, for 80 bucks, you're going to get a pretty good quality. So that would be my recommendation if you're looking to keep it on a budget. Um, as far as like how these work, I want to show you, I want to show you these polar patterns. Basically, this is the different responses that you're going to look at. So the first one I'm going to show you here is this is the MXL 990 polar pattern on the screen here. So the idea here, and I don't want to get too technical with you, but the idea here, <laughs> she's yelling about something up there. Oh, my daughter's crazy. Um, the idea here is this front part, and going back to showing you the example, this part with the logo, basically you want the sound to be captured coming into the front of this microphone. You don't necessarily want the stuff in the back or on the sides because that's just going to be the reverberation from the room, the room sound. You really want the, the bulk of what is coming into the microphone to be coming from the front, which is what these, these, uh, these polar pattern uh, these cardioid polar patterns are really doing. So you can see the MXL 990. Most of it is uh, the source is coming from the front. Um, there's a little bit from the sides and a little bit from the back on this one. And I want to show you the comparison. This is the PR40 that we were talking about, the PR40. Uh, you can see that one's even a little more distinguished on the front side of things. Really not much coming from the back. Uh, that you're going to be Not a lot of sound you're going to be picking up from the back of the microphone. And then as you kind of look over here at the RE20, a very similar to the PR40. Again, a lot from the front, not so much at all from the back, right? Because you really don't want a lot of room sound when you're doing, um, when you're doing uh, voiceovers. Um, so that being said, I still think you can get away with this 990. And you want to be conscious about the room that you're, that you're recording in. Of course, you really want a room that uh, that's maybe has a lot of furniture. Uh, in my bedroom, I actually have a bunch of clothes hanging up on a curtain rod that I kind of talk into that because that fabric absorbs the sound. So uh, that's kind of a way that I worked around it, but you can look at some soundproofing stuff if you want to. Again, just starting off and, and, and even, you know, getting into some, some, some more work, I really don't, I don't know if you're, you need to really think about building out the $2,000 studio for this stuff. I think you can get some really good sound just by getting creative with, like I said, with furniture in a room uh, that's not echoey or like I said, building, um, <laughs> building a wall of shirts and talking into that. Uh, so that's kind of uh, that's kind of the microphone for you. So, you know, as far as well, again, garbage in, garbage out, right? So you can't just plug that microphone straight into the laptop and go. Um, what you want is you want some kind of an interface, some kind of an audio interface or a preamp to be able to to go through. This is a a Focusrite, a couple Focusrite preamps within this Scarlet two twelve or two i two. I really don't know how to say that, but anyway, this is something that I picked up for. I believe $150, something around there. And you can actually do two different microphone sources at once with these XLR inputs. And then it goes out through USB into your laptop and your, your, your recording program that you're using. But Focusrite preamps are kind of legendary for just being absolutely awesome. They deliver a really, really clean sound. Hi, Chloe. There's my other one. There's my other one running around. So they do, deliver a really clean sound. And um, that's kind of what you're going to be, be after here is one of these one of these preamps. I would really recommend this one. You can also get the single, the single XLR uh, one for I think around $100. So again, you're talking maybe 100 bucks or so for this. You're talking a, around 80, 90 for this. And for the most part, I mean, other than your recording software, uh, that's about it. The only other thing that I would want to point out to you is uh, this is a pop screen right here, right? You can buy a fancy one online, but the idea with these is you, you talk into the pop screen, right? and it catches your, what we call plosives, okay? So plosives are the, the, the puh sounds and the buh sounds. They can have a little more, they have a little more force to them and therefore you can get these weird pops if you're doing this close up and recording a voiceover, puh, puh, puh. It's gonna catch those and distort the microphone and make it sound really bad. So this actually catches those plosives and, uh, and helps to, uh, to make, that, uh, to make that, uh, that voiceover a little bit cleaner without, without those distortion points. So again, you can buy this. You can buy a fancy windscreen if you want to. You can also make one uh, for pretty cheap. You can make one for, mm, I'm going to say, five bucks, something like that. You can go get an embroidery hoop, uh, like a six-inch embroidery hoop. 
and a pair of pantyhose. That's how we did it in recording class 20 years ago whenever I was doing that is, yeah, we just bought pantyhose and embroidery hoops. We made our own pop screens for like $5 and they work just as well. They don't look fancy and you might have to hold them if you don't want to figure out a way to rig that up, but they get the job done pretty darn well. So again, those are kind of the elements that you want to think about starting off with your recording software. I would recommend Adobe Audition. I think it's a really good program, especially uh, for somebody that's kind of new to this stuff. It's not very complicated. It's not very overwhelming. And I think that will, that will get the job done for you. But again, I like that MXL 990 if you're on a budget. If you can afford a little bit more, hey, get that P PR40 or that RE20. But on a budget, that 990 is a pretty good microphone for recording human voice. Get a good pop screen. Get a good audio interface like this Scarlet that I recommend. And you can get it all done for a couple hundred dollars. So in the next video, we'll actually kind of get into, we'll dive in a, a little bit into actually recording the voiceover. And we're going to kind of talk about um, some compression and some limiting to help um, to help that uh, that voiceover really pop and really really shine. Some things that I kind of do standardly. Here's my other one. The things that I've always done standardly, and it's just a couple of really easy steps and using your ears, and you can get a really really good quality voiceover. So we'll talk about that next time and kind of go for there. But hey, don't forget to uh, to subscribe if this was helpful to you. I'd appreciate you liking it and, uh, and subscribing. Help me get to a thousand subscribers. I'd really appreciate that. And uh, until next time, keep it real or something. Like that.